Welcome to a slide presentation on dental film, what's it all about? This presentation is intended for the dental assisting student. We're going to look at this dental image receptor, traditional dental film, which may be used in some offices today. Uh, it's still a very good image receptor for the dentist to diagnose dental conditions. We're going to look at the composition of the film, the components of the film packet, and film size. So let's start with film size. Dental film size is assigned a number, either number one, number two, number three, number four, the panoramic film size or the cephalometric film size. Let's look at this photo for intraoral films. And we have the number two film, which is used for bite wing images and periapical images or radiographs. You could also use a number two film for um, a child, uh, maybe for a bite wing, depending on the size of their mouth, maybe an eight year old, um, certainly on up to a 12 year old, Again, it depends on the size of their mouth. And then we have a number one film and a zero film. And you can see that these are quite a bit smaller than the number two film. These films can be used for an adult who has a very small or narrow mouth and definitely in pediatric dentistry. The number three film, a rather rectangular film, is also known as a bite wing film. And on this particular film, uh, you can actually get an image of the premolars and the first and second molars uh, as a bite wing in one film. My experience has been that I've seen the bite wing film used predominantly in the military dental clinics. Um, and of course, those clinics have, have gone uh, or have are using the state-of-the-art digital image receptors at this time. Then we have the number four, occlusal, also known as occlusal film. And this film will allow us to uh, take an image, obtain an image of the entire maxillary arch, dental arch, or the entire mandibular dental arch, um, also including the palate and the floor of the mouth. For our extra oral film size, we have panoramic film, and you can see that it comes in various widths and lengths, and we have the cephalometric film, another extra oral film, that's usually an eight by 10. Let's have a little quiz and see if you can determine which film size is used for each type of image or radiograph. So in this first example, take a good look at the teeth. You have to recall your, if you're a student, you recall your dental um, anatomy and uh, types of teeth and the dentition. Our next example, we have premolars and kind of a molar and a half in this bite wing, but it's very um, oblong or rectangular. Here we have images of the maxillary dentition and the palate and the mandibular dentition and the floor of the mouth. In this full mouth series, we have a film which would show um, a periapical film showing the entire tooth and surrounding uh, structures. And then we have smaller anterior images in, for this particular full mouth x-ray uh, radiographs. So I've given you some examples here. You can stop the slides and see if you can answer those. Well, I'm gonna answer them for you right now. So in our first example, it's kind of hard to tell from this photograph, but it could be a number one, or actually it could be a zero. Our next one has the premolars and a molar and a half, so to speak, and that's a number three film, a size three film. 
Then we have our occlusal films, which are a number four using a number four film. Our periapicals will use a number two film. And then we have several smaller images here for the anterior teeth, both maxillary and mandibular, and that most likely is a number one film. Our next film size, so here is a profile in the cephalometric film, and we have that. I didn't give you a chance, did I? Okay. And then we have this other film, which by default is the panoramic film or process of elimination, the panoramic film. And you can see quite a bit on a panoramic film, both dental arches, uh, the TMJ, the maxillary sinuses, the inferior border of the mandible. So it's very important to have the proper film size in order to have a diagnostic quality image for the dentist. Film packaging information. One of the reasons I'm presenting film packaging information is because as dental assistants, we usually order products for the dental office. And we have to have some information so that we order and purchase the correct product. So we've looked at film size, so that's important to know when you're ordering dental film. And it's usually listed on the box, either size 0 or 1 or 2 or number 4, or if you had panoramic film. Some packaging has a film code, so in this case, um, IP01, so it's a 0 film size, and there's one film in each packet. And then here is a 1-1, one, one, so a number 1 film. Um, here's a number 2 size film. And the dental film 50 was just a particular uh, code for this film. The amount of film is in the package. You either have, this one has 25 film packets. Uh, most of them have 150. Uh, sometimes it depends uh, on the film packet itself. If it's double, it may only have a hundred. So here you have to know whether you're ordering packets that have only one film inside of them or two. Film speed. These days film speed is usually um, ultra speed and we will talk about film speed in the next slide, but it is important that you're ordering the uh, most current film speed available. Many times there's an ordering number, or sometimes it's known as a reference number, so instead of uh, all the other information, you could simply order by the reference number or the ordering number. It's also important to know about the expiration date, which is usually on the bottom of the box. Now, this I just gleaned from the internet. This film expired in 2014, August of 2014. So certainly, if you have any old film lying around in your office, um, you want to look at the expiration date because it may not provide a really clear image. Um, for the dentist. So it's uh, best not to use expired, expired products for our patients. So what is film speed and how does it affect radiographic images? Film speed is actually the uh, amount of radiation required to expose a film and it is represented by a letter. Very common letters are D, E, and F, but some name brands don't use letters. Like we saw in the previous slide, um, that was termed ultra speed. The film speed is designated uh, to films by a, an, or, an organization called the American National Standard Institute. And it was founded way back in 1918 to oversee standards for various products, not just dental film, but various products in various industries um, to help with conformity and safety. So they will report to various other government agencies 
um, for um, safety in this particular uh, purpose, uh, we want to use the highest film speed to reduce the amount of radiation. The faster the film speed, the less radiation needed to produce an image. So, um, as I said, most likely, um, if you're using and working with a known dental supply company, you are going to get uh, what I would consider in most of us fresh film, so film that's not expired and film that is a um, high or a fast film speed. The film packets themselves, most of them are poly packets, so they're kind of a vinyl or plastic type packet. We're looking here at the front of the packet. You can see it's plain as opposed to the back of the packet. And that can be very useful, remembering that it's plain in the front uh, for a dental assisting student who is learning how to um, expose radiographic images. Um, and I use the little saying of plain to the PID. So when you place the packet in the patient's mouth, this front side, this plain side, should be toward the PID. Uh, they also make paper packets, uh, which are less expensive than the poly packet, but they also have more of the chance of um, contaminating the film with saliva. So the poly packet is a moisture resistant packet or like a little envelope for the film. Comes in either single or double. Sometimes they're color coded from a company. And in this case, this is a double film and it actually has a barrier around the, the whole packet. So that also will ensure that saliva is not contaminating your film. Now let's look at the components of a film packet. You have a moisture resistant outer wrapping and that is to prevent saliva. It's not moisture proof so if you're just learning to take x-rays and you're going to start taking them on patients you have to move quickly and you can't just leave the film for in the patient's mouth for probably more than 20 30 seconds depends on how much saliva the patient have you could contaminate your film with saliva then we have a black paper and so the black paper is to prevent uh, light um, from uh, being uh, exposed or for the film to be exposed to light. Then we have the film itself and we're going to talk about the film in just a moment. That's what's going to capture that latent image and it has layers of chemicals that we'll look at in the next slide. Then we have a little sheet of lead foil and lead is the metal that will prevent um, x-rays from penetrating a um, it's like a shield it stops them from uh, penetrating whatever's on the other side of this lead shield so this foil is placed on the back of the packet inside and it helps to um, prevent scattered radiation from the film itself and so all of this is put together and then placed into the outer wrapping like a little envelope. And then it's sealed um, to keep saliva from contaminating the inner contents. Next we have the composition of the film itself. So here's our film. And then over on this side of the slide, I'm using this little bar as if we're looking at the edge of the film. So we're looking at the edge of the film. And the film itself is actually made of layers, kind of like having a burger and you have the burger in the middle and then you might put lettuce on one side and other tomato on the other side and you're building it up 
to have a burger. <laughs> so we start out with a film base. And the film base, this is all these layers are going to put the put be put together and they make up the film. So the film base is a flexible piece of polyester plastic. It can either be green or blue in color, somewhat transparent, and it just serves as the base for the emulsion, which we will get to another layer. On the film base, there's an adhesive. And so the adhesive allows the emulsion to attach to the base, to stick on to the base. Then we have the emulsion, and the emulsion is really the chemical part of the film that absorbs the radiation and uh, produces the latent image. It's made up of gelatin, which is the suspension or the substance that holds the silver halide crystals and these silver halide crystals absorb radiation um, the they're made up of bromine and iodine and these two chemicals uh, within the silver halide crystals actually store the energy of the x-ray of the ionizing radiation and that results in a latent image on the film and we term it as latent because we don't see it right away it's not visible right away then there's a protective coating or a protective layer and this pre prevents the other chemical layers from being scratched and that is the composition of film When you're handling film, oh sorry, it's just one I, F-I-L-M, sorry about that. When you're handling film, uh, you do have to have a special environment to handle film that has been exposed, that you've used on a patient for uh, imaging. Um, you can't just have it out in the light. You will uh, ruin your image. You It will... Uh, once you process it, because it has to go through some chemicals, um, you'll have just a black film if it's exposed to the light. If, uh, if it's also been exposed to um, ionizing radiation, uh, you cannot uh, just touch it or pick it up um, with your fingers. Uh, you have to be very careful. Look at this photograph, how they're holding the film by the edges because we don't want to get fingerprints on the film or smudges. Even with gloves, you can actually um, uh, ruin the surface of the film and hence ruin your image. Uh, film is affected by radiation, so you don't want to keep your film in the exposing room or by a computer or by stereos, anything that emits radiation. It's going to change the effectiveness of the chemical composition of the film. Physical handling, um, just like the photograph, you always want to hold it by the edges. If you place it on a surface and then kind of move it along, you could scrape it. Um, you could cause scratches in the film. Um, also, if your patient kind of happens to bite on the film and it bends, you could actually put creases in the film and that will affect your diagnostic quality. Temperature and humidity and exposure to chemicals can all affect the effectiveness of the film. So it should be in room temperature with low humidity and not exposed to any chemicals um, as far as the, the film packets themselves. Uh, we will expose the film to chemicals to actually process them and uh, form, uh, bring to the surface, so to speak, that latent image. And you do have to be careful how the chemicals are, are uh, used and um, to process film because you could 
put staining, different colors on your film. Um, they could be green, they could be yellow, they could be brown, and then resulting in a, uh, a poor quality film. And of course, paying attention to the expiration date. This uh, photograph, I have a, a term here, daylight loader. If you are using an automatic processor, some offices no longer have dark rooms. Um, this is like a mini dark room, and we will look at that in a couple of slides or in another presentation. The components of the film packet um, that need to be disposed of and you'll want to check the regulations in your city, county, state for what can be put in the trash, what might have to be picked up by um, a radiographic uh, company. And so um, in my state, lead foil has to be recycled, but by a uh, radiographic company or a company that accepts certain types of metals. It cannot go into the trash can. The black paper could be placed into a recycle receptacle where I live. Um, the outer wrapping goes in the regular trash and any used film or the little film itself wasn't processed, that also is a special pickup item. It cannot just be put in the trash uh, because of the silver halide crystals. So be sure you check the regulations in your area. This concludes the slide presentation for dental film. I hope you found it informative and look for my other presentations. Thank you for your attention.